I can't hear you. Are we ready? <laughs> You're going to have to do better than that. Are you ready? That's a bit better. If we're not getting sound complaints from the other speakers, we're not doing our job. So, welcome everybody. Welcome to the famous, no, the infamous BI Power Hour. The event that everybody attending SQL Bits looks forward to. The event that everybody speaking at the Power Hour really dreads. <laughs> Who's been to a Power Hour before? Who's never been to a Power Hour before? Ooh. Ooh, a lot of people. <clears throat> you know what this means? We have to go through the rules. <laughs> All right? What are the rules? The Power Hour is 100% fun. You are not going to learn anything at all. <laughs> I don't quite know what happened there. But you are not going to learn anything at all. When you see the feedback link at the end, do not be that person that says, I went to the power hour and there was nothing useful there at all. <laughs> all right. The second thing is, this content may not be appropriate for all audiences. What happens at the Power Hour stays at Power Hour. Are we all friends? Yeah. Do you want to be the person that loses Patrick his job? Because yeah. <laughs> he's only one HR violation away. <laughs> and last of all, we are not insured. So there is going to be a lot of flying swag. You need to pay attention. Right, some things don't, don't, hurt. <laughs> yeah, don't, some don't. things really hurt. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. So watch out for the flying swag, and please, please pay attention. Right, I'm your host today. I will not be doing anything particularly difficult, apart from introducing the speakers. So it's my job to introduce our very first speaker, <laughs> our friend, Casper de Jong. So while Casper gets set up, <laughs> what I wanted to do, I got told I had to fill in a little bit between each handover. So what I thought it would be good to do is talk a little bit about the real work that all of the people on stage do. So for example, Casper has got a great new job. He's just taken over the Gartner Features team. <laughs> this is a very important job. Like 80% of the developers on Power BI work on this team. So his job is to build all of those features that are great for demos, but completely useless in the real world. <laughs> He's on hand to deliver all of those features that are there to meet all the kind of current hot topics. So there's been a few delays and drags on, but the great slate of Web3 features for Power BI are coming soon. Soon you'll be able to store your Power BI audit trail in blockchain. You'll be able to use your premium capacities to mine Bitcoin. <laughs> and you'll be able to mint your Power BI visuals as NFTs. So give it up for Casper. Thanks, Chris. So yeah, I, I want to tell you a story, because I was not planning to be here at all. Not at all. So I was planning. Last year, we did Power Hour here, too. We had tremendous success, a lot of followers, a lot of people. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. So instead of being here, I was planning to become a famous YouTube star. You know, millions of views, get that diamond play button, become the next Mr. Beast, make lots of money, and not be here, but retire. <laughs> Take it easy, chill, at the, go at the, at the beach, again, not be here. But unfortunately, this not, did not happen. <laughs> My YouTube views are really bad, it plummeted. It's like, what can I do? And like, it, I'm so happy that YouTube hides the dislike button uh, because I have so many more dislikes than likes. It's, it's, it's not funny. So what can I do? Well, the main thing that, of course, that I can do is get my data, move it into Power BI, and let's see what happens. So I have my Power BI here. It took my amazingly, nicely looking report. Uh, views are going down. I have lots of comments. 200 dislikes, 10 likes. Now we can see it. My DAG sucks. You suck. A side channel. Patrick is way cooler than you. So I don't know. That's a true statement. Yeah. That's a true statement. What can I do? What can I do? I don't know. We just have to see what's going. Hey, what's this? 
Wow! Hey, it looks like you're creating a really ugly report. Would you like help? <laughs> oh my god, who, who are you? What's going on here? Who what? are you? What? You haven't heard of me? It's me, Clippy GTP. <laughs> and I'm here to take your job. Wow, that's, that's amazing. What, what can you do, Clippy, for me? W what's going on here? Sure. Here, let me fix the report for you. Oh, wow, Clippy, wow. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> all of a sudden, Clippy, we're, we're all going to be out of a job. Clippy just fixed my report, but it's still like sad Patrick is cooler is coming up from the comments. It, this is not looking good. So what else can happen here? Oh, Clippy's back. Excuse me, I don't mind to pry, but it looks like those numbers are still really sad. Would you like help? Oh my god, what, what does Clippy can do for me? Wow! <laughs> Clippy fixed my data! I'm a YouTube star! Woo! Woo! I, I bet you could beat Ma Matthew with swords. Sexy Dax, the guy in the cube, could learn something from you? <laughs> I, I think so, but how did you do this, Clippy? I can make any report look good. It comes free with Power BI Premium. Oh my god, of course, <laughs> it comes with Power BI Premium. So, so Clippy, so now you know how to do visualizations and modeling. Why did you learn all of these things? Yo! Yo. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> what? what do you think? I use the power of the internet. But I'm definitely better than those two clowns. Whoa, 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 Clippy, that's going a bit nasty here. But so, Clippy, so you know modeling, and do you also know some DAX? Of course, I learned from the masters. <laughs> but don't forget, enjoy DAX. Enjoy DAX. Oh my God, Clippy! So when he starts talking about DAX, he gets an Italian accent. <laughs> what's, what's going on here? But Clippy, you're a nice guy, but I feel like you're a bit toxic. So I really don't want you around. Well, that's what you think. You can't get rid of me that easily. First Power BI, next world domination. All right. <laughs> so, so I don't know what happened here. I think I accidentally sneaked in a feature or something in Power BI. But so, what do you guys think? Do we want Clippy in Power BI or not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, that's it. Oh, woo! <laughs> Great. Well, our next speaker is actually our only speaker who doesn't come from Power BI land. Mark Price Mayer comes from the database side of the family. Whoa. Mark, Mark has got a very important job. He's the release manager, the delivery manager rather, for the fabled Synapse Gen 3. It's his job <laughs> to make sure it's delivered on time and on budget. And we guarantee that it is going to be faster than Snowflake, Databricks, or whatever data platform your great-grandchildren are using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you ready to go, Mark? I am ready to go. Take it away. Number two. All right, before we get there, um, so I did the Power Hour last year, and I think it went OK. But I was, in, I was in smug mode after it. And then um, one of the SQL Bits committee, he will remain nameless. Um, let's call him Alex W. Brought me over <laughs> to the, um, the desk and went, Mark, we've had some complaints about you. <gasps> what have I done? Is it another HR problem? Oh my god, what have I done? And he went, you had the most complaints about noise from your session. And he went, I thought, oh my god, are they never going to let me back? And then he went, well done. <laughs> but that was last year, and this is this year. And when anyone does something like that, it always makes me go, can we go further? <laughs> All right, so can we make some noise? <laughs> All right, so when I say power, <laughs> you say out. <laughs> that wasn't very good. So, <laughs> All right, so just this side, power. Okay, sorry, and for the Welsh, power? power. <laughs> Are you all right? What about the middle? Power? power. Uh, 
What about this side? Power? Power. Uh, no, unfortunately. <laughs> can, we, can we try a bit harder? How about power? power? All right, so make some noise. I want you to make noise to wake the data gods. I want Ralph Kimball to know what's going on. <laughs> I want the people in the other rooms to start complaining. We're pretty far. So everybody, power? power. Start stomping your feet. <laughs> louder, louder. Okay, all right. <laughs> Power? Power? All right, okay. So when SQL Bit said the, the topic was D and D, I went, oh, this is great. Because this is the, my two favorite things SQL, SQL Server, and D and D. What does that make? That Just makes. The screen. Oh, yeah. You, you want to see the screen, don't you? <laughs> all right, that makes the SQL Bits mud. So does anyone remember muds? Anyone in the audience? Yeah. Anyone in the audience who is over, under 50 who remembers MUDs, well done. So I used to play them, and actually, I pretty much failed my second year at university because of them. So I took the opportunity to take one of the most expensive engines and make it into a multi-user dungeon game. So let me see if I can log in. Oh, OK. The first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to just zoom this out so you can see it properly, is, well, the first thing, I need some help. So if I do go, <gasps> so let's, okay, let's scroll it back out. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a working game. All right, can you see the screen? So the first thing we need to do is, well, it tells us we need to pray. So let's go and let's click on it. Let's go and pray. Oh, sorry, uh, come on. Screen's a bit rough. Okay, pray. But I have to hit go because it's SQL Server. It doesn't know, pray, go. Yes, okay, we need to set our character up. So let's do change the name. Uh, so if I make a spelling mistake, now SQL Server. So this is just SQL Server, mark PM. Okay, change and go. There's a shimmer in the fabric of the universe. <laughs> okay, let's do change race. Um, any particular race? <laughs> okay. Good, because it's less characters. Thank you very much. <laughs> Change, <laughs> class, comma, Bart. which bar? Oh, good, less characters. Go. Okay. All right. Oh. Okay. So we stamp our foot. Now there's a lot of text on the screen, but the important bit is we pray to the gods of SQL, Bob Ward and Connor. <laughs> and, and chat GBT has done a lot of work. I can't expect you to read all that, but it's done a lot of work on my behalf, just so you know. But we're in a church, and there's a big statue. So let's go and examine the statue. Right. It's a statue <laughs> of Simon Sabin. Oh, yeah. ChatGPT knows a lot about Simon. But the important bit, there's a note at the bottom that says, please help me. We've got a quest. Who's ready to go on a quest? <laughs> OK, so we need to go south. I already know where to go because I wrote it. I'm not cheating. We have to go west. So you can see some of the descriptions. You know, chat GPT has helped me. Some of them a little bit thinner on the ground. So we need to go to the island. So we need to swim south to the island, go. And we're on the island of the purple frog. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a giant purple frog called Alex. <laughs> so shall we examine Alex? The, the nasty Chris <laughs> Webbs has stolen my children. <laughs> Shall we get them back for Alex? Yeah. Sorry, most of you don't want to get Alex's children back. <laughs> Do we want to get Alex's children back? Yeah. Okay, so we need to find him, and I know where he is. So we're going to swim north, and we're going to go, and then I'm going to use a cheat. I'll go north, and I'll go four which is a little cheat in SQL Server. And here I am at Chris Webb's lair. <laughs> and look, Monsters in he's working on his MDX skills. And there's a dartboard in the corner with Adam and Patrick on it. So what do we do with Chris? We have to attack him. <laughs> attack Chris. Good job. Look, he <laughs> drops a jar. But he also lets us know we need to delete his internet browsing history. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We'll definitely do that for him, won't we, Chris? <laughs> All right. But what's in this jar? 
It's filled with tiny little Power BI developers, little tadpoles. And as you listen, you hear little shouts of, yo! <laughs> All right, so let's, let's take the jar. And then we need to go back south. Keep going south, go back. And we need to give them back to Alex. South, south again, go, go. Oh no, we need to swim. It really does work. No, no, honestly, it does. I won't show you that. And so we need to give the jar, Alex. All right, I had to cheat on that bit because of parameters. Oh, look, we've given him back his tadpoles. He pours them into the sea and tells them they've got to keep working on Sentinel. Or he'll chop them up for frog's legs. But he gives us a ticket to the D&D party. Hooray! <laughs> And that's me done. That was good. Cool. Next up, we have Gabby. Gabby, get yourself set up. <laughs> Gabby also has a very important job. Her job is to write the error messages for DAX. <laughs> <laughs> She's very conscientious. She always makes sure they're super informative and helpful for when you're debugging your code. I also hear that she takes a second salary from Marco and Alberto because apparently she's somehow crucial to their business model. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But take it away, Gabby, please. OK. Hello, everyone. So as you oh. might know or not know, yeah, there we Well, yeah. yes, yep. there we go. Um, you might hear it. I'm German. So um, well, Germans are. Well, <laughs> thanks. What, 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 do you, what do you think of when you are thinking of a typical German? So I thought, well, we are quite polite. OK, uh, we, are, we, we have a great sense of humor. Uh, our country is the home of the football. Wait, 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 wait. That, 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 I, I did something wrong. Oh, that, that was the British people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mixed that up. Um, so let's try it again. So um, thinking about uh, German. So we are punctual, or you could say inflexible, maybe. I don't know. We are very honest, sometimes a little bit blunt. Um, and we are very, very thorough or a bit pedantic. So. But I think there is a few characteristics, a few things we have that make us not seen as lovable, amiable as we could be. And I, let's talk about one of the biggest blockers for a positive image of Germans. And that is, any idea? The common German tourist. <laughs> so when I think of a German tourist, first thing that comes to mind is, <laughs> of course, uh, um, I, I think we are the world's biggest complainers. So we see every speck at the bath mirror or anything else, and we complain about everything. Honestly, that's true. Um, and well, we like to reserve our sun lounges by getting up first thing in the morning, putting our towel on the sun lounge, going back, making us ready for breakfast, and sometimes not even showing up to take that sun lounge later on. But but. We have it. Uh, that's the most important thing. And so I was thinking, how can we improve that? So dress code, yeah, good idea. But let's be honest, we are not the only people with a really bad taste. So that, that wouldn't solve the issue. Stopping us from complaining. Um, did you ever try stop rain from being wet? That would be like the same level of challenge. So the only topic we could do is the sun launches. And so I thought, is there something in Power BI that could help me solve that? So what would we need to do? So we are somewhat law-abiding. We like rules. And in many resorts, there are rules that you're not to do that. But it feels like those rules are not enforced. So one good consequence would be if we are blocking the sun launches, we are not getting breakfast. Specifically, we're not getting coffee in the morning. That's like killing us. OK, so but how to check on that? So I thought maybe we buy a drone. The drone flies around every 10 minutes, takes pictures. And there is this amazing feature called uh, AI vision image tagging I heard about. So pictures look 
and I thought, what if we just put some special symbols on the towels and assign those symbols to the rooms? So we name the room like star, moon, whatever, put symbols on the towels, and then we use image tagging to actually see that towel on that nonche belongs to that room. So we make that available to the breakfast people, and they will stop the uh, inhabitants of that room to actually get to the coffee. Sounds like a good idea. So what do we do? We are setting up a composite model that consists of our very, very uh, advanced hotel model <laughs> and a list of the images that will be uploaded. And then we could go, and, and that's so simple that even I can do it. If we have this image list, we just have this tiny little piece up front here saying AI Insights Vision. Oh, that looks great. Let's try that out. So if we click on that, um, it will load a little bit, and then it will allow us to actually say, I want to tag images, and I want to take the list of the image URLs as input. Well, that takes too long. I prepared something. <laughs> so in the end, what we can do is we can get the text of the images, and we can actually format them in a proper way. And then we can create a beautiful report. And everybody who knows me knows my reports are always the best looking, or well, it doesn't matter. It's about efficiency. The information is important, not the looks. So we, we have the list of the rooms. We have the text. And well, let's look back at, back at the image. I'm pretty sure I can see a star there. Mm. Well, it says decorated, but there's no star on the tag. So, well, it feels like that is easy enough, but really training a model to really be good enough to identify what is so obvious? Well, I think to a level, level of German efficiency, that is not good enough. So, well, I, I, I might think about something else to solve that issue for the next time. But thanks for attending this one. <laughs> Cool, thank you very much. Oh, I forgot to ask, has anybody any questions? <laughs> Can you post them on the forums, please? Thank you. Right, next up we have Lars Anderson. Survived. Lars is a very gifted user interface researcher. His job is to increase engagement with Power BI Desktop. And what he's found in his research is that if you move all of the icons and the most used features around every month, <laughs> it increases engagement. <laughs> You just watch out for on-object interaction and see what happens when you need to put a title on a visual. It's going to be amazing. It'll definitely mean that you end up spending at least two hours extra in Power BI Desktop every day. So I'll give it up for Lars Anderson. Oh, Thank you. <clears throat> OK, so we all know that working with Power BI can be hard. It's about a lot of numbers complex data models, and why, why don't we make working with Power BI more fun so everyone can be energized when they leave their day-to-day -day job working with Power BI? And we're actually doing that. So today, I'm happy to announce a new partnership. And uh, this is the first time we talk about it. And um, please don't tweet about it. Don't post on social media. But this new partnership is with Carlsberg. Yay! So one of the secrets behind me joining the CAT team back in 2021 was actually to join this secret mission to create a partnership with Carlsberg, which is uh, headquartered in Denmark, where I'm also located. <laughs> uh, another secret I can share with you today is that we actually tried to make a partnership with Heineken. Some of you may know that Casper, he moved back to the Netherlands some years ago, but yeah, he failed. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about what we're going to add. We're going to add a new add-on to Power BI called Power Beer. <laughs> and I'm going to explain to you what this Power Beer is actually about. So it's aligned with the existing Power Beer licenses. So there's a free, a pro, <laughs> premium per user, and a premium per box. <laughs> but as I know, all of you know that Power BI licensing is very easy. Um, so I could just stop my presentation now. But I just want to give you a little glimpse on what we actually get here. So first, we're going to talk about type of uh, license. So free, pro, and premium per user, less user-based. 
The premium per box is box based. Um, premium per box. <laughs> <laughs> then, you know, today when you're sharing content in Power BI, there are some restrictions, and there's also restrictions for this Power Beer license. So who can actually consume the beer? So first of all, I'm not going to talk about, about the free one, because if it's loading, the free one, you get nothing. Um, uh, this is Power BI. Yeah. So you don't get any beer with free. I mean, free, it's free. You can get a trial and, and, and test it out for 60 days, and then you may upgrade. But then if we talk about a pro user, well, if you're a pro user, then you can actually consume beer with other pro users or premium per user users. <laughs> if you upgrade to the premium per <coughs> power beer premium per user, then you can only consume beer with other premium per user users. So there are restrictions. And if you go to the best SKU we have here, premium per box, then you can share or consume with everyone, even external. So you can have great parties. Then you may think, OK, well, I mean, nothing is free, so there must be some limitations. And there are limitations. So how much beer is actually included? As again, free, we don't get any beer. <laughs> With Pro, you actually get one gallon of, gallon of beer per month. With premium per user, you get up to 100 gallons. So that's also why there are some limitations. And if you go with premium per box, then you actually get up to 400 gallons per month. So if we take this chart, you can actually see how much you get. So with <laughs> B1, you get 25 gallons, B2, 50, and so on. So very easy. <laughs> I know you're all excited to uh, sign up for this new add-on, but you will probably think, well, with Power BI today, you just have to have internet connection to use this. But with beer, you actually want to have a bottle of beer in your hand. So there is a little uh, difference here, and that is about the distribution of beer. So let's talk about how beer is distributed. Again, free, <laughs> nothing. If you go with either pro or premium per user, everything is managed by Carlsberg. So it's easy. <laughs> there are no limitations. Of course, the limitations are what the licensing include. But if you go up to, let's say, premium per box B1, well, then it's managed by the customer. So you have to manage the distribution. And you can get up to eight gallons of beer per day. And in order to do this management, I will give you a little sneak peek of uh, a new app we will launch soon that is called uh, Power Beer Metrics app. And it looks like this. <laughs> so remember, for B1, we can have up to eight gallons per day distributed. So we have this uh, threshold here, the yellow dotted line. So on the 1st of March, we get 2.4 gallons. That's fine. So on the 2nd of March, it's a Thursday, only 2.4 gallons. But then it's Friday. We need more beer. We need to have a party. So we go bananas. <laughs> we order 8.9 gallons of beer above the threshold. Damn, what's going to do? What's going to happen the next day? Well, nothing is free. So the following day, we'll not be able to order any beer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> then if we go back here. Some of you may have noticed we actually have an extra option. So if you go with the premium box, you can pay a little extra, get extra deliveries for this Saturday, but of course you have to pay for that. I'm going to show you one last thing here, because we are also uh, collaborating with uh, OpenAI. And uh, one thing you can test in here is say, what is the best beer in the world? <laughs> well, oh. <laughs> Let's get rid of some of this swag, shall we? Who wants swag? Yeah. Who wants T-shirts? Yeah. Who wants stickers? Yeah. Who wants Patrick's underwear? Yeah. <laughs> Patrick, you offered. <laughs> Who wants an out-of-date Bob Ward book? <laughs> Well, you're going to get it whether you like it or not. <laughs> but duck while we're throwing it away. We're not going to let you. So our next presenter, well, so far all of our presenters have had really important jobs. Our next presenter is Ted, who I'm really sad to say does not have an important job. He's got <laughs> quite a lot of impact, though. His most recent achievement was changing the Power BI color scheme to teal. <laughs> it took him six months in Microsoft Paint. 
But the good news is that now he knows how to do it. You've got to load all the UI into Paint and then like sure, click sure. fill and everything. He's going to do it all again, but this time in black, so you're going to get dark mode. <laughs> Ted, take it away. Good day, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, last hour, I went to Megan Lagorian's session. Excellent session. She was talking about if you're a young presenter and how to improve you know, what you do, make your content more clear. So I'm going to follow the same vein. I spent about 25 years doing uh, classroom instruction, and I saw a lot of different personality types. You know, so we're going to kind of turn our focus and look at audience members you know, like you and talk about you know, which are the good ones and which are the ones you, know, you really have to avoid. So to help these new trainers, you know, I created this report, the Attendee Bad Behavior Analyzer. Um, and I wanted to kind of make it available to everyone with Power BI embedding. So if we say AKA MS uh, slash ABBA, you know, follow this URL and you'll be having the time of your life is what we can say. So when we go here, you know, what we wanted to do was kind of create this inheritance hierarchy. You know, we have attendee at the top. That's the base type. So think of attendee, you know, if you're familiar with object-oriented object -oriented programming, it's like system.object or remember the component object model? Anyone remember I unknown? Anybody? Sorry, Ted. Ah, oh, man, OK. I was hoping to trick someone. Anyway, so let's kind of look at the first category, the ones we like. We like to have stars in our class. You know, so that's the ideal type of attendee. We'll go quickly through these, because these are not the types you have to worry about. You know, but there's the buddy. That's the one who's just like you, the one you want to go out to, <laughs> to dinner with. You know, there's the mentor, the one that knows more than you about the subject, but doesn't kind of confront you in class, waits till after lecture and told you what you got wrong. There is the uh, bailiff. You know, that's the one that tells <laughs> other students to be quiet. He's the one who closes the door for everybody else. You know, there is the Mother Teresa figure. And that's the one that's more interested <laughs> in successive others than Successive self. Uh, and then, you know, the last one is the star, you know, is the road warrior. You know, that's the one who's sitting in the back row of the class and while taking instruction from you, also working on one or more consulting projects and billing customers, you know, a full eight hours per day as, you know, he or she is taking your class. Okay, that's good. Okay, now the next one we're going to look at are the Teflons. The main thing about a Teflon is <laughs> no matter how hard you try, you're not going to get through with technical information, just no ability to absorb. You know, so my boss, uh, you know, Mark is a Teflon, and he's fully admitted I don't spend time talking to him about deep Power Query stuff. Don't feel sorry. They know a lot about business. Quite often, the Teflon has a much better car and a much bigger house than you. You know, so when we look at the different types of Teflons that might come to a seminar, you know, there's the muffin eater just there for the food. There's the phone hostage, you know, can't even look up at you. There is the Xerox. The one that you put a diagram on the board just before you're about to race it. No, 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 I have to copy it down. The Xerox will never understand what the heck he's copying down, but just the act of copying is very fulfilling you know, to this type of student. There is the, uh, the day planner. So Monday morning, uh, what slide are we going to be on you know, Thursday at 4.15? Because I have a call and I just want to be able to you know, pre-read. You know, there's the sponge who just loves information, but what you're teaching is no more important than a random, you know, show on the Discovery Channel. There's the warden, not really interested in your class, but just there to make sure other students attend. And what we find is warden is often found in compositions, you know, with prisoner, someone who's there against her will, doesn't really care, just hoping it's all over soon. And then the worst type of prisoner, you know, is the pretzel that just kind of sits there and stares at you with that angry face. Okay, now on to the important part. <laughs> the people that can mess up the classroom experience for others. You know, so there is the red flag, those you have to proactively watch out for. You know, so there is the storyteller, the guy who raises his hand to ask a question but then tells a long story, you have to keep cutting off, and your question is... Uh, there's also, you know, the spell checker, you know, so the spell checker is the one saying, <laughs> your slide says Prince of Bell. Don't you mean principal? Oh, Jesus Christ. So, okay. so the, there's the blue screen. Every student has the same computer, yet one can't get through, you know, one step of any particular lab. Uh, after seeing Mark's presentation, maybe I should have used his picture here. Uh, there's the flamethrower, you know, the threat to HR. You know, the person who, the more you ignore him, the more offensive he gets. Uh, you know, he can determine what's most offensive to any crowd. And he uses AI models to turn, you know, future trends in offensiveness. There's the stalker, the one who follows you into the bathroom, continuing to ask questions. There's the know-it-all who knows everything about everything, especially what you're teaching. Uh, you know, so this person thinks that they're omniscient since birth, and so they can't admit to learning anything because it would contradict you know, them being omniscient. And then again, there is the 
dinosaur. <laughs> I know it all with no modern experience. And if you've met Chuck, you know that dinosaurs, you know, when aggregated with storytellers, is completely toxic. There is the salesman. The salesman, you know, as a teaching Power BI is always going, but Tableau does this, but Tableau does that. You know, so it's just kind of hard to deal with. And then there's a derived type of insurgent. And he's the one who waits till you leave the classroom and tells the other one, Ted's a big liar, you know. <laughs> Tableau will always be faster and better and cheaper than Power BI. So you have to watch out for this guy too. Now there's clients. So I'm teaching a training class and this guy shows up thinking that it's his personal consulting engagement. Keeps asking you a question, you know, gives you 100 pages of documentation so you can get up to speed and be useful on this project. And on day two, quite often that escalates to angry client, someone who's really mad that you're <laughs> answering other questions and gets agitated. You keep teaching the agenda that was promoted. And then finally, you get really angry client, the one who stands up and says, this is horrible, I'm leaving, I'm never hiring you as a consultant again. Okay, so those are the red flags, and that brings us to our final category, the sleepers. Those are the ones you have to watch out for because they're really hard to figure out that they are sleepers, and quite often you figure out after it's too late. So there's the doppelganger. That's the guy that doesn't care what you're training about. He just wants to take your place, ask questions about you, your career, your contacts. So how long have you been training? How much money did you make? Can you give me the contacts of the training you know, coordinators at these different companies? Got to watch out for that guy. There is the... <laughs> Perfectionist, if it's possible in theory, it should be possible, you know, in practice, nothing is ever good enough. You know, the highest praise you're going to get from this guy is, eh, well, I guess it's good enough for now. <laughs> there is the assassin, you know, <laughs> who impersonates a buddy all week. You think you're just knocking it out of the park with this guy? <laughs> until the evaluations, one out of five in every category, and no text description to tell you why. And so, what's your instinct? Go find this attendee and find out why it was bad. <laughs> but it's an assassin. He's completed his operation. He's in the wind. You're never going to find him again. Okay. So then you have the big brain bully. So the big brain bully is the guy with the smartest in the room <laughs> complex. You know, so don't take this person on. You know, you'll get decimated. The only thing you can really do, make a couple self-deprecating jokes, get the person laughing, and then you know maybe once or twice, kind of in front of everyone else say, well, Bob's got expertise here, and kind of let him talk and get through it. And then finally, oh, this is the one you don't want, the evil <laughs> genius. <laughs> Look at that smile, so friendly, so trustworthy, or so it seems. So here's his MO. He pretends to be naive. He knows exactly what your comfort level is, and he'll ask you a couple simple questions to overinflate your confidence, slowly move to the edge and beyond, take you down the spiraling rat hole. You know, so that gets to be tough. And so what we wanted to do, now that we have all these personality profiles, you know, is just like pilots get flight simulators, you know, to have some type of a classroom simulator so that you can go and say, you know, what would you do, you know, with this number of students? You know, and also if I go back over here uh, to Power BI and we go here, you know, what you can see is that we've created this classroom, you know, and the classroom just has some DAX that picks a random number of students, you know, between nine and 16 arbitrarily picks one of the profiles. You know, so as we go back here, you know, now what we're able to do is to go to the classroom simulator page and, uh, you know, continually test your, you know, your reaction, you know, to having this in the classroom and to kind of continually figure out, you know, how you're going to adapt to that. So that is my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> Let's move some of this swag. Those Bob Ward books have got to go, I'm afraid. Last of all, we have perhaps the most famous people in the room. You've seen them on YouTube. You've seen them live. Believe it or not, they have got day jobs. Do you know what Patrick and Adam are meant to do all day? They are the PMs for the shape map visual. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think they might have been a bit distracted recently with doing videos and stuff, maybe distracted for the last couple of years, but I can assure you they are working really hard to get it out of preview. Yes. And yes. once they've got it out of preview, they will also be working on getting VNet gateways released, direct query on data sets released, Spanish language support for Q&A released. <laughs> So give it up for Adam and Patrick. Yeah. Yeah.
Oh. Oh, <laughs> All right, Patrick. We got some special permission today. Found out this morning. Yes. Found out this morning. So we were given permission to show you the next latest thing that's coming from Microsoft. So we have now conscripted everyone. You are now all under NDA, and you are required to tweet. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not right. Not tweet. That's not, oh, all right. Not well, tweet. whatever. Not tweet. Not no tweet. one's going to catch you. It's fine. All right. <laughs> so the name of the next big thing that's coming, you're gonna, this is going to blow your mind. Get ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. I know it. Project Fork. Woo! <laughs> and you may be asking, why fork? <laughs> well, we were at dinner last night, yeah. and it was the first thing I saw, so we went with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do, should we show them? We're going to walk you through what this Project Fork does. All, all the new, new features. Are you right. ready? Enough of all this talking. Yep. Head over to your machine. Let's head over to my machine. Yeah. All right. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. Right? This is an amazing explorer of the resources that you have available for your data. So we've been working on this, Adam and I, we've been working on this project for, Ooh. I think since I joined Microsoft. Ah, uh, long time. Since you were in diapers. <laughs> since was, oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm really mature. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. So let me show you All right. this. All right. Let me get into this, right? Yeah. You don't so, have a mouse, though, so. Oh, this is going to be a struggle. So <laughs> this new product that we're introducing today is called, the first thing we're going to show you is SQL Server Enterprise Manager, okay? New. It's brand new, never been released. You've never seen this before. It's amazing. So the first thing I want to show you is when you work with your data, what do you got to do with it? You need to get it into a database, oh. okay? You need to get in, and we've had these things like SSIS and oh. Azure Data Factory and all these and things. The, and this cute little thing that wants to be there, Power Query. Power like, Query. Yeah. It's so cute, so cute, so cute. We're about to get rid of Power Query. Yep, We're don't need it anymore. We don't need it anymore. I'm about to show you something. Let me zoom in, because I want everybody to see the name of this new product, Adam. Uh, <laughs> Data <laughs> Transformation <laughs> Services. Ooh. DTS Ooh. packages. Oh, We're packages. To, packages. Ooh, it's like Amazon just knocking on your just door saying, your here's door. your data. Right? Some packages are big, oh. some are small. Let me show you this, right? And so but here they we go. all work. They all work. They all work, right? Here we go. Let me open up the first package for you. Look at this, so exciting. That's okay, don't worry about that. It's a few bugs, we're still working it out. <laughs> it's in preview, it's fine. It's in preview, we can have bugs, right? So let me show you this. So basically what we're doing is, Adam, I'm connecting to a source. Those beautiful icons. Right? Going the to The marketing Excel. team went above and beyond Amazing on Amazing with this these icons, and I'm dropping it in a server. The, what kind of server? I don't know, it's just differently different. We don't know where it's It's going. up in the cloud. It's in the cloud, who cares, right? right? So that's the first thing I want to show you. And this product is so new that I forget how to uh, navigate it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're, you're perspiring a little a bit. A little bit, because I didn't know where to go. I was confused. It's like, we've been working on it so long. Getting you all hot and by. I am. You can see me sweating. <laughs> and so, but once you get the data in, you have to. <laughs> stop. Keep going. Stop. Keep going. Stop. 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 <laughs> Okay, that's enough. Just leave. Okay, so once you get the data in, you have to figure out how to pull the data out. Now, we've had great tools. Recently, they introduced this thing called Azure Data Studio or something like that. It's yeah. cute. It's a cute little tool. So old. But the reason that I'm not all into it is because it can't connect to analysis services, so I'm not going to use it. But this new tool, I'm not quite sure it can connect to analysis services either. But... <laughs> Not yet, we're working on it. We're working on it, we're working, we're working on, on, it. on it, right? It's a feature, it's a feature. Yeah. All right, we gotta get a PM Go to ideas.fork.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we wanna do, we got this new tool. I set up the server last night for this new product we have. And if we were trying to figure out, should we require a password or well, something like so that? So okay. let, me, let, me, let me, security is incredibly important. Yeah. We wanna be mindful about this. Yeah. So at the same time though, Patrick's getting a little up there in the age. I'm mature. And I need to help you out. Yeah, so we're so gonna make this easy. Just hit enter, it just works. It just works. We don't need a password. <laughs> there we go. We don't need a password. Who cares about passwords, yeah. Adam? So let me change, let me get over to a database. I have to show you this, and I'll let you show you the stuff you've been working on. Yeah. I'm gonna switch over to, let's say AdventureWorks, and I'm gonna write a query, right? I might have to take my glasses off. Hang on one second. <laughs> Select star. <laughs> <laughs> What was the name of that table? PBI Internet Sales? Underscore. Yeah. yeah. 
the dollar sign. Internet sales dollar sign. talked about this. I know, man. I just, you know, progressive lenses. They work, they don't work. <laughs> Boom, just like that. We right. got data. We <laughs> got data. <laughs> got data. Now, I want to do something with this data, though, oh. Adam. Okay. You got to, I mean, it just, this can't be the end. No, 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 okay. no. Because look what I can do. I can copy it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big ax from, then, our, from our focus group. And then you know what we can do with it? Yeah. We can paste it into Excel. Of course, because that's all I want to do. <laughs> that is our number one feature. I'm telling you, that's the number Speaking one feature. Speaking of Excel, because yeah. everyone uses Excel. Everyone uses Excel. You got a little notebook or a workbook under your desk right. here. That's you got right. something in your closet. That's right. Some people refer to it as Excel hell. Excel hell. I well. don't. I think it's Excel beauty. It's Excel, it's it's Excel heaven. All right, so let me show you. I worked with the Excel team. Oh. I, no, I didn't know strings. about this. I didn't know about I had this. to go all the way up okay. to get this to happen. Let me see. But we're going to do something in Excel that is just revolutionary. Okay. okay. All right? And we're going to... Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not about to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> this is beta software. It, it may have blue screen. <laughs> I, Patrick touched my machine. Oh, my God. All right. So we're just going to... We're going to do something fancy. I'm, I'm going to my, my, my cloud portal. <laughs> Don't ever do this in production, but I'm going to turn it off. <laughs> and then we're just, going to, we're just going to turn it right back on, right? When in doubt, reboot. It's fine. Don't ever let Patrick touch your machines when you're presenting. Bad things happen. Next thing you know, there's going to be some update. And oh my God. Who knows? I think it blew up. <laughs> Don't crash my machine. It's over. <laughs> It's all right. This is, the, this is the power of the cloud, right? It's the speed of the cloud, right? Things just come back up. Yeah. All right. Watch. Watch. We're back. We're back. We're back. It's still saying welcome. No, no. It's oh, logging woo. in, but it's we, back up. This was, this was, we meant hey, for this to happen. This is resiliency and disaster recovery. All built into, built into the product. Built into the product. <laughs> all right. And there we go. It's got to warm up, right? The cache has got to warm okay. up a little bit. So the first time Ooh. you hit it, it's a little slow. No password. Uh, no password. No, no password. Pa no. Security is not important, man. <laughs> this is this like ultra factor authentication, right? It just, it just knows that you want in. All right. So look at this new thing. I'm going to call it chat GPT off. <laughs> off. <laughs> chat GPT. <laughs> All right. Woo. Look at this. Oh, Woo. look at my data. Woo. Oh, my gosh. Wait. Woo. Wait, watch it. Okay. I know you, I knew you like pie charts. I do like pie charts. I know you like pie charts. Watch this. What? Oh. What? Ooh. And I'm filtering on the side. I can filter things? On the side? We can, we can just add filters and oh. play with our data. Oh, this is next level. We can explore. We we're, can interact. We're about to change the game, man. We're about Ooh. to change the game. Oh, all right. But, you know, I, like, I'm, I'm working in Excel. Yeah. Excel is nice, yeah. right? Yeah. And I just want to hand those out like Frisbees. It's fine. <laughs> just but like the swag. I found an easier way to distribute this. Let me guess. Hmm? Can I guess? No. Oh. Right? Yeah. On a file share. No. Oh, okay. No, huh. file share is so 1990s. Okay, 1990s. All right. <gasps> Whoa. <gasps> what? We're going to leverage. <laughs> I talked to the SharePoint Online folks. Yeah. And I, I pulled some strings with them too. So watch this. You're doing gonna, a lot of work. We're going to go to, I know, I yeah. get things done. I see. I see. You just break my machine. I did. All right. What? So <laughs> we've got our gallery. We've got our gallery yeah. up in SharePoint Online. Yeah, yeah. And we can go to Patrick's Janky Data. Yeah. Let's see what that looks like. It doesn't look like it. Give it a second. Okay. Come on. Cash is warming up. Maybe it won't do anything. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's doing it. We got to be patient. Yeah, we got to be patient. We're fast. That's what our customers say. They like it when we're fast. You know, under, under 30 seconds. That's our, our slogan. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a cross. <laughs> well, it's because you crashed my stupid machine, man. It's got to warm everything back up. It's coming. It's coming. Give it a second. <laughs> Excel, you know, Excel likes to linger a little bit it because it wants you to know that it's there. Because once it comes up, you really can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question yeah. while it's lingering. Yeah. So those little icons with the little red X's on them. What was oh, that no. There, so there's, a, there's an update for the refresh that's coming, the oh. thumbnail generator. Oh, okay. Chat and, GPT. You can, and you can get that to work. Yeah, ChatGPT hasn't gotten to it Okay. Yet. It's coming. <laughs> All right, well, what you would have seen here is the same exact report <laughs> in the cloud in SharePoint Online, right? So we're just going from your on-premises machine up into the cloud. And this service is so reliable. So reliable. <laughs> we guarantee, unless Patrick touches it, we guarantee five nines. And the way that we can do that is because we have 59 machines running it. We were 10 away from a good time. So, all right. <laughs> I cannot help you with that, my friend. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> so everybody wants to know when is this going to be available? Yeah, yeah. All right. So we got two kind of two phases going on here. We got the data elements, <laughs> and we got the reporting elements. So. Public preview for the data elements, September 26th, 2000? 2000. All right, but wait for service pack one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the reporting elements, they'll be available in November. General availability, we'll let you know. We'll let you know. <laughs> we'll let you know. And if you do want to sign up to participate in it, just Ooh. use that QR code. It will be amazing. All right. All right. Now, just real quick before I give it back to Chris, I know we're, we're a little over, but let's just see. No. Eh, it didn't. Still lingering. All right. <laughs> it's, still, it's still taking a little break. Patrick rubbed it the wrong way. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoy Project Four. <laughs> Let's get rid of some of this swag. Come on, everybody. Everybody up. Get rid of the swag. We need to get rid of all of it. Oh, all the swag. What is this? So thank you, everybody, for coming. Yeah, where's Patrick's underwear? Oh, nice, nice, nice throw. Books, no books, no books. One more here. Nobody wants a book. Oh, all right.